Hello, everyone. I'm Jan Chosen Bays. I'm a pediatrician and also a Zen teacher. And I'd like to talk about one of our exercises for mindful medicine. The exercise is called loving hands or loving touch. So for one day or one week or one month, as long as you'd like to do the exercise, please use loving hands uh, and loving touch with your patients. So for example, if you're palpating a pulse, and you might do that on purpose so that you can practice this exercise, even if the nurse has done it before you, as you palpate a pulse, or as you palpate a patient's neck or their belly, remember to use loving touch, loving hands. And you can do this with yourself too. So if you're washing your face, wash gently. You can even pat your face, oh, what a sweet person. Or as you shave, use loving hands and loving touch. We know how to use loving touch. Uh, we use it automatically when we pick up a baby or if we're comforting someone who's crying or a child who's hurt themselves or if we are patting a, a pet, a faithful dog or a cat who's climbed into our lap. Uh, and we use loving touch, of course, with um, those we love, our partners, our lovers. But why don't we use it all the time? This is actually one of the essential questions of mindfulness. We know that being aware, that being mindful, uh, being kind, helps us connect and makes our life much richer and more satisfying. So why aren't we aware all the time? Why don't we use loving touch all the time? Why do we fall back into our old habits? This is something to ponder, I think, almost for a lifetime. Every time you notice that you've veered off of awareness and mindfulness, what, what, what was, why did I do that? Was I going somewhere that had more interest or more attraction than right here, right now, in the present moment? When I was in medical school, the, many of the surgeons had what's called uh, the surgical temperament, I think this was inherited from England, from Europe. But in the operating room, they would suddenly begin acting like two-year-olds. And they would throw valuable instruments, and they would curse at the surgical nurses. It was really stunning when I had known them outside the OR to see them behave that way. And there was only one surgeon who didn't do that. And he was quite remarkable. Watching him operate, he handled all tissue as if it were precious. And I thought, OK, if I have to ha ever have to have surgery, that's the person I'm picking. We all know that when we're hurried or we're stressed or we're distracted, we rush out of the house without saying goodbye to the people we love, or we pass a coworker in the hall and kind of ignore their greeting or ignore the fact that they, they might be stressed or they might be unhappy. And when that continues, then other people become an object um, a kind of nuisance, or even an enemy. And certainly that can happen in medicine when we're stressed. And it can be an, a symptom of burnout. In Japan, uh, and I've practiced in Japan a fair amount, not medicine, but Zen, it's very interesting because they treat inanimate objects as if they were alive. They personify inan inanimate objects so, for example, if you hand somebody money in a shop or, or anywhere, you hand it over with two hands. Or, um, for, for example, tea whisks that are used in the tea ceremony are often given a name, or the tea scoop has a name. And there's a custom with uh, sewing needles that are broken to give them a funeral at a temple and to... Uh, insert them in a block of tofu, soft tofu, as their final resting place to thank them for their service to you. It's very sweet. And there is an honorific um, O, which is often put at the beginning of a name to indicate your reverence for it. So even simple things like um, water is omizu, not just mizu, but omizu. And money is okane, so honorable money. And 
even chopsticks, like the wooden chopsticks that you get in a restaurant, they're called ohashi, which means honorable chopsticks, recognizing the gift that of their life to uh, enable your life to be better. Probably this comes from the old Shinto religion in Japan, where um, natural objects were honored. The spirits, the kami, in natural objects like large trees or waterfalls or large bodies of water, the ocean, uh, or mountains, were all honored. And therefore, the things that came from those um, sacred objects, those sacred entities, not objects, but entities. So you could try this with your medical tools. <clears throat> you could try uh, calling your stethoscope, oh, stethoscope, in your mind, or honoring it as you pick it up to hold it with loving hands and thank it for its service as you put it on and as you use it. Or, of course, with surgical tools like scalpels. Or even, and this is challenging these days, I think, with electronic medicine, with your computer. Can you honor your computer and its service to you, uh, but not be too enchanted by it so that you don't honor the patient that you're taking care of? So this exercise for this day or this week or this month or as long as you'd like to practice it is to touch everyone, including your patients and including yourself, with loving hands and loving touch. Thank you.